Hey fellow lyric horns, I'm Clipper Sammy, the pop song professor, and welcome to my channel where we explain, create, and sometimes draw song lyrics. Today we're talking about Drops of Jupiter by Train, and I've brought in April because I thought she would be a good representation of you because almost nobody knows what this song is about. So we're gonna go ahead and start by asking April what she thinks Drops of Jupiter is about. Well, since you asked me and implied that it's not what I think it's about, <laughs> I now have like four theories. But okay. I'm gonna start with theory one, which I think is the one that everybody thinks. Yeah. It's about a girl that he loves who leaves him for a period of time and then comes back. And like has to go and explore the world and yeah, find herself. Yeah, yeah. She like says like, I love you, but I can't date you forever because I haven't seen Europe yet. Yes, you know? I'm a dreamer. Yeah, blah, blah, exactly. Blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is wrong. Not yep. that. Okay. Yep, that is incorrect. Theory two. Yeah. It's about his kid going to college. No, not about a kid going to college. Okay. You're getting warmer though. Theory three. Okay. It's about somebody who died. Is it? It is. Yeah. Yes. You want to hear theory four? Yeah, what's theory four? Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs is always a safe theory. It is, that's true. <laughs> always, just if you're in doubt, go with drugs. That's what a song is about. Um, yeah, so Drops of Jupiter is about his mom who died of cancer. Uh, and I've got this really great quote from him here. He says, loss of the most important person in my life was heavy on my mind and the thought of what if no one ever really leaves? What if she's here but different? The idea was she's back here in the atmosphere. And so he was like trying to write a song to the record label was pressuring him for a hit, a hit. And so he went back to his home in Pennsylvania and one morning the words in the atmosphere kind of came to him when he woke up. And so he started working on this song. Um, and so we'll look at some of the lyrics here. Now that she's back in the atmosphere with drops of Jupiter in her hair, she acts like summer and walks like rain, reminds me that there's a time to change since the return from her stay on the moon, she listens like spring and she talks like June. And some of those lines kind of remind me of a mom, like reminds me that there's a time to change, which we all kind of were thinking was this like hippie hipster girlfriend, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, but that's yes. that's his mom, you know, sitting across the kitchen table with a cup of hot chocolate talking no, with him about no, life and even stuff. No, the atmosphere. Well, yeah, maybe when they were alive, right? Oh. But yeah, <laughs> now she's, you know, in this idea like, in the atmosphere. Isn't the atmosphere like not the air that's around us? Isn't the atmosphere like the air that's like way up high? I think there's levels to the atmosphere. I need to take science again. This <laughs> wrong kind of explanation <laughs> video. She, she's kind of like, he imagines her as, I don't know, it's kind of like almost this Buddhist idea where she becomes part of nature and she's kind of like floating in and around it, right? Yeah. Drops of Jupiter in her hair, she becomes nature in a way or, or joins nature, lives in nature in a way. Uh, and chorus one, but tell me, did you sail across the sun? Did you make it to the Milky Way? And you can really feel like the sadness in his, his lyrics where it's like, he doesn't want to believe that his mom is dead and gone. And so he's asking, you know, he's creating this alternate reality where, you know, what if she never really left, right? What if she's just in a different state? To see the lights all faded and that heaven is overrated. Tell me, did you fall from a shooting star? One without a permanent scar. And did you miss me while you were looking for yourself out there? What do you think about that permanent scar line? Because that's probably the most confusing one. Tell me, did you fall from a shooting star? Right. One without a permanent scar. It sounds like the hippie girlfriend where he's like insecure, right? And he's saying like, like oh, I've got, I've got a scar. Which, actually, the, the Pat does have a scar oh. on his chin, I think. Well, maybe he's saying that he's like a star and that in real life she knew him and he was a star when he was like, not perfect. Like maybe when she went to heaven, she got to see a perfect star. Who's a perfect star? <laughs> can't think of any. <laughs> or, you know, he's saying like, you know, maybe you went to some places that are better than Earth. Like maybe Earth has a scar. Like it's it's not perfect. It's a little bit messed up. Or it's you to also places. not a star. Well, yeah. Fun it, fact with Cliff and April. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I, I know that, come on. I was just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's using a little bit of poetic license. Uh, verse two, now that she's back from that soul vacation, so she went off and now her spirit's back on earth, I guess. Tracing her way through the constellation, she checks out Mozart, Mozart while she does Taibo. Mozart? It was just a slip, you can't, <laughs> no, stop. 
Reminds me that there's room to grow, and now she's back in the atmosphere. I'm afraid that she might think of me as plain old Jane told a story about a man who was too afraid to fly so he never did land. That's what makes it sound like it's his girlfriend. Yeah, I'm afraid that she might think of me. Like, who's afraid of what their mom might... I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people who are afraid of what their mom might think of them. Nah, my mom's chill. <laughs> my mom's like, yeah, you're a little plain, but it's fine. I love you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> your mom just, she does, I, I was about to say your mom tells it like it is, but then I was like, No, she's pretty that gentle. That joke doesn't work because I can't, <laughs> that would be me saying that you were playing and I can't do that. Because oh, it's not true. There we go. Wow, now I'm insulted. There, in there's all these, all these like <laughs> things I have to think through before I speak. It's so hard. Um, but afraid that she might think of me as plain old Jane told a story about a man So, you know, just like maybe my mom won't want to be as close to me Like maybe she'll experience more and then can you imagine saying this to your mom mom? I'm afraid you might think of me as plain old Jane told a story about a man who was too afraid to fly So he never did land. You know, be yeah, like, oh, I'm thinking of you as insane What did you just <laughs> say? That doesn't make any sense. It does kind of feel like that line goes off the rails a little bit <laughs> And yes, it confuses everybody who thought, you know, who, who wasn't sure what this song was about. <laughs> Chorus two, uh, but tell me, did the wind sweep you off your feet? Did you finally get the chance to dance along the light of day and head back to the Milky Way? Tell me, did Venus blow your mind? Was it everything you wanted to find? And did you miss me while you were looking for yourself out there? That's the for yourself out there. Sounds like it's about some chick, but I, mean, I guess his mom can his look mom... for herself. Hey, and if you're dead, you have all the time in the world. So why not, right? <laughs> I guess. Um, it's such... By the time I die, I found myself. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's a fair point. <laughs> How would that even work? Okay. Um, deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. So the bridge. Can you imagine no love, pride, deep fried chicken? Your best friend always sticking up for you, even when I know you're wrong. And I think this is one of the most confusing stanzas. Can you imagine no first dance, freeze dried romance, five hour phone conversation, the best soy latte that you ever had, and me? Part of it feels like he's pandering to an to a record label or an audience that like wants this to be about a romantic relationship because it's so much easier to market. Because not everybody's had their mom die of cancer, right? So... It does, it may, like maybe all of these things are relevant to her. Like maybe she really loved fried chicken. Maybe she... Her best friend always stuck up for her. Had a really her. terrible first dance at her wedding. Maybe yeah. her relationship with his dad was really crap. I don't know. Yeah, I think that he's just kind of imagining all of these things that feel perfect and it almost seems like it's this abstract placeholder for just things being really good. And then he lists all these things that he really likes or that maybe, yeah, she would have really liked. I think that's pretty astute. It's out of date now. It should now be an oat milk latte. And a what? Oat milk, that's the oat thing. Oat milk latte? Yeah. Oh my, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's that's the basic idea with the song Everybody Drops of Jupiter is about his mom having died of cancer and him really missing her, but hoping and imagining, you know, that she's out there learning, having a good time, and that she'll come back to him. And I mean, haunt him would be the wrong word, but be there for him. Yeah. We'll go with that. You could make lots more romantic imagery. She's in the atmosphere. He wants to breathe her in. Ooh. He wants to feel her in the breeze as it crosses his okay. skin. The metaphor breaks down <laughs> very quickly. Um, hopefully that doesn't take away from the seriousness and the beauty of the song. Yeah, the reason I wanted song. to talk about it and share it with you and you was that it's it's just a song that that I remember and that sticks with me. You know, it's like it's very beautifully done. It's very cool. So we've talked about that song. There's gonna be some cool videos right above my head right now. I hope that you guys check those out. They're pretty <laughs> exciting. Thank you, April, for that. And thank you for being here too. All right, guys, talk to you soon.